Everyone from the assistant coach to the star players are what make an NBA team great. But what any team needs to be successful is a good starting five. For a little while there, the league was made up of who had the best big three, but now it's turned to more of who has the best starting five. So we're gonna rank the 10 best starting fives in the NBA today. Their regular season and playoff performance does play a part in these rankings, but we're gonna try and look at things not too much based off of team success, but instead we're gonna try and look at who has the most complete starting five, with the best players at all five positions, and things like team chemistry and a great combination of offense and defense playing a role too. So with that said, let's get into it with number 10, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Number 10 was a tough one to decide between giving it to the Thunder, the Bucks, or maybe even the Mavericks after they got Doncic and DeAndre Jordan. But as you can tell, I went with OKC, and here's why. They got Russell Westbrook, Andre Roberson, Paul George, Jeremy Grant, and Steven Adams. Russ and PG-13 are both great, and they actually play well together. But until Westbrook can learn to be a better teammate, his teams are always going to suffer. Besides that though, this lineup has pretty good chemistry but they do have their downsides. Roberson's one of the league's best defenders, but he's pretty much non-existent when it comes to offense, and Jeremy Grant's a good hustle guy, but he's still young. And then as for Steven Adams, he's a great center to control the paint and play off of PG-13 and Russell Westbrook. This lineup could use some work, but still makes the top 10 starting fives in the league. Number 9, the Minnesota Timberwolves. I mean, the Chicago Bulls. I mean, the Timberwolves. On paper, you'd think the Wolves would be rated a little higher because they got a top two center in the league in Carl Anthony Towns, they got the all-star Jimmy Butler, the former all-star in Jeff Teague, Andrew Wiggins who might turn into a star one day, and Todd Gibson. But it seemed like they underperformed this past season in the playoffs. I mean, from a talent standpoint, they've got one of the top lineups in the league, but it seems like they didn't have the chemistry they needed. Jimmy Butler has been rumored to be getting traded from the Wolves any time now, but with or without him, it looks like the team's got a bright future. As for now though, if they do stay together, they'll definitely still make the top 10 from a talent standpoint. Wiggins and Towns are still young, but if Towns stays on the same pace he is, and if Wiggins develops into what everyone thinks or thought that he would, then they can find themselves a lot higher on this list in the future. Number 8, The Utah Jazz the Jazz starting five consists of Ricky Rubio, Donovan Mitchell, Joe Ingles, Derek Favors, and Rudy Gobert, which is a great blend of everything to have. They got the playmaking from Rubio, the greatness of Mitchell, the all-around game in the threes from Ingles, a solid power forward in Favors, and the defensive player of the year in Gobert. And the Jazz weren't supposed to be as good as they were after losing Gordon Hayward and trading away George Hill, Joe Johnson, and Rodney Hood. But Mitchell and the Jazz surprised a lot of people through these five guys having great team chemistry and everything you could need out of a starting lineup. Number 7, the Los Angeles Lakers. Alright, so let's be honest. The only reason the Lakers are this high, or even on this list in general, is because of LeBron. Right now their lineup consists of Lonzo, KCP, Brandon Ingram, LeBron, and JaVale McGee. If you take out LeBron and put Kyle Kuzma in that starting five, it'd be a solid young team, but nowhere near the top 10 in the league. It's going to be really interesting this season to see what LeBron does with a young team like the Lakers and how this starting five works out. We saw how the Lakers season went last year, so we're really going to get to see how much of a difference LeBron makes on a team this year. I'd expect them to barely make it into the playoffs with a chance that they miss them. But I mean, at this rate, we'd expect LBJ to make the playoffs even if he played with LeBron Jr.'s AAU team. Number 6, the Washington Wizards. I might be slightly overrating the Wizards, but I'm expecting big things from them this year. Especially with the starting five of John Wall, Bradley Beal, Otto Porter, Markeith Morris, and Dwight Howard. The big three here is Wall, Beal, and Dwight, and I think as a trio, they're gonna do great things. Wall and Beal have always been a great backcourt, and now that they're both gonna have a big man like Dwight Howard to pass the ball off to as a second option when they drive to the hoop, I think will really make a difference. Dwight might not be his old self, but he's still a solid defender and is an excellent finisher around the hoop. And sure, they did have Gortat last season, but, but come on, that's not the same. And then Markeith and Otto might be the weaker points of this lineup, but Markeith's the perfect complement to Dwight to spread the floor and give him space. And then Otto's shown that he can be a solid player to do a little bit of everything. I think all the pieces are there for this starting five to be great, but it's really going to be up to Dwight Howard on if this team is average as usual or if they're able to make a bang in the playoffs this year. Number 5, 
the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors look like they're able to have a breakout year this year. And that's weird to say because they always finish the season as one of the top teams in the East. But now that they swapped DeMar DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green, it could be their year. Their new starting five is Kyle Lowry, Danny Green, Kawhi Leonard, Serge Ibaka, and Jonas Valachunas. Whether you like the decision to trade DeRozan or not, it was the right move because that trade made this team much better. Not only did they solve their problem of not being able to perform in the playoffs by adding a former finals MVP, but they added a great three-point shooter and defender which that lineup needed. So now they have Lowry and Leonard to be their all-around players, Green to shoot threes and defend, Ibaka to stretch the floor, and then the weaker point of this starting five I would say is Valachunas, but even then he isn't that bad of a center. So overall, I'd say this is a really solid starting lineup, and I could see Toronto competing with the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals to see who makes it into the NBA Finals next season, but we'll have to wait and see. Number 4 the Philadelphia 76ers. Even though they've got the second best starting five in the East, I still don't see them making it any further than the second round next season, just for the fact that they're still a young team. Their five is made up of LeBron Jr., one of the best shooters in the league, a solid all-around player like Covington, a stretch forward in Saric, and the best center in the league in Embiid. Simmons and Covington lack a reliable jump shot, but Redick and Saric do a great job of evening that out, and then Embiid is just there to dominate at all times. That is, if he can stay healthy though. The man has already had people say that he has the best overall skill set of any center in league history, and I want the man to become an all-time great, but we're gonna have to see if he can stay healthy. He missed his first entire two seasons to injuries, only played 31 games in the 16 and 17 season, and played 63 games last season because he was sitting out back-to-backs. But if he stays healthy from now on, the 76ers without a doubt earn the spot as the fourth best starting five in the league. They showed in the playoffs that they have good chemistry and they could play together as a team. As the years go on, if they can keep these guys together and things go as planned, we can see them move much higher up on this list. Number 3, the Houston Rockets. The Rockets took a hit when they lost Trevor Ariza, but they made up for it, kind of, when they signed Carmelo Anthony. Now we don't really know what this starting lineup is going to look like, because we still don't know if Melo is going to come off the bench or not. If he doesn't and he's a starter, the lineup will be CP3, James Harden, PJ Tucker, Carmelo Anthony, and Clint Capella. And if this is their 5, then I think they need to swap places on this list with Philly or maybe even back to number 5 with Toronto. Because I don't think it's going to work just like it didn't in OKC. But if he does come off the bench, then this is where the Rockets starting 5 deserves to be. And they'd probably start Gerald Green instead of Melo, which made a great starting lineup for them last season. The way that Harden and Capella play off each other is another huge part of what makes them a top team in the league. They're perfect complements for each other, and then on top of that when you have PJ Tucker to kick the ball out to to hit a 3 as the third option on a drive, they're in good hands. And Tucker and Green are both guys to stick on the other team's best players on defense that you can rely on to do the dirty work. And all of this is not even mentioning the fact that if things aren't going right at any point in the game, they have CP3 to give the ball to, to get the team going. The Houston Rockets are a perfect example of not needing a stacked team to win, but instead putting role players in an actual system to get the most out of them to help your team win. Number 2, the Boston Celtics. This is mine and a lot of other people's picks to come out of the East and make it to the NBA Finals next season. We saw how great they were last year in the regular season and especially in the playoffs, but now that they're adding Gordon Hayward to give them a starting five of Kyrie Irving, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, Jason Tatum, and Al Horford, they're going to be that much better. And if they would have had that five against LeBron in the Eastern Conference Finals, I have no doubt they would have won because there's really no weakness here in this starting five. They've got four guys that'll definitely make the all-star team next season, and when Jalen Brown is the worst or least best player in your lineup going into the season, that's definitely a good sign. And even Jalen is great on both ends, and if he wasn't on such a stacked team, I would have said he could really have a breakout season next year. They have the perfect blend of offense and defense, and team chemistry on this team that should be able to give the Warriors a run for their money. Number one the Golden State Warriors. I'm not even gonna say anything. I refuse. Video's over. That's it. I'm out. All right, but now I'm back. If you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to comment and let me know. Give your thoughts on the list. If you liked it, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.